Hey, what's up, Greek for All family? I'm starting a new mini series on how to translate Biblical Greek. Each video is going to be about five minutes long. We will be very practical. We're not going to go into all of the details. So we will discuss the main principles and translate, translate, translate. So with this in mind, let's begin. In this video, we're going to translate present active indicative verbs. We will focus on this small section of the Greek paradigm chart and with time we will cover all of the Greek paradigms, but for now, let's just see how the present active indicative verbs should be translated. When it comes to translating present active indicative verbs, we need to remember that these are the present verbs and we can translate them into English with the present um, simple I go or I study or continuous I am going or I am studying and continuous translation is um, preferable here. In order for us to recognize uh, present active indicative verbs in the text and translate them, we need to memorize this um, table. So this is the paradigm for this uh, present active indicative verbs, that small section on the paradigm chart. And here numbers one to three are persons, so first person, second and the third person, singular and plural numbers, first person singular is I and plural we, you singular, you plural, uh, he, she, it and they. These endings must be memorized. So each of these endings is unique for specific person and the number. So Luo we will always translate I lose, you lose, he loses, she loses, it loses, we lose, you lose, they lose. So whenever you see the Greek word in the text which has one of these endings, first of all you know that this is the present verb, in fact present active indicative verb, and also it tells you what uh, person and number it is, so you can translate them accordingly. So now let's actually go into the uh, examples and translate as many as we can. Here we have two examples, Echomen ton Avraham, and uh, this is our verb. We can clearly see the ending omen. So we go to our table and we see that uh, this is the ending for the first person plural, meaning we. We. And then um, uh, this is the verb echo, I have, and so you need to know your vocabulary. If you want to support me and my ministry, please consider my uh, vocabulary app to learn um, the words. So echo, I have, echo man will be we, we have, first person plural. So we translate we have ton Avraham, we have um, Abraham. So this is the translation of this text. And uh, the second text is Kai Blepo. We look at the endings Omega and we find this ending in the first person singular. In fact, the first person singular is your lexical form. This is what you will see in the lexicals and dictionaries, your vocabulary books. This is how you learn the verbs. So this is your lexical form, a blepo, which means I see. So we translate this as and I see. Very simple. Look at the endings, see where it is and translate accordingly. Two more examples, Hodethios Genoske. So this is our verb and we look at the endings. The ending is A, so we find it right here, third person singular, so he knows or she knows. But in our example we also have a subject, Hothios, the God, is our subject. The word there means but, so but God, and then we have he knows. So instead of translating but God he knows, we whenever we have a subject, and here we have a subject, we simply substitute um, this word he or she or it with the subject. All right, so we simply translate but God knows. In the second example, leges kai didas case, we have two verbs with identical endings. Uh, connected with the word kai, which means and. Here we do not have a subject, so we are taking the subject from the table. Second person uh, singular, you, so you speak and you teach, or you are speaking and you are teaching. A beautiful example from the Gospel of John, Iesus lambane the bread. So Iesus means Jesus, and this is our subject. 
And then we have a verb lambane. Again, we look at the endings and we see the ending a. And uh, we know this is a present verb, so we'll need to translate it um, accordingly. And we find it in the third person singular. So which means he, she, or it um, takes. Lambano, I take. Lambane, he takes. And here, because we have a subject, we translate Jesus takes the bread. Another good example, which you are going to see a lot in the Gospel of John. Amen, amen, lego to you. So amen, 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 or truly, truly, lego, and this is our lexical form, this is the first person singular ending, which means I speak or I say, and we translate this again, first person singular, uh, truly, truly, I say to you, or truly, truly, I am saying to you. Gospel of John, chapter 10, the Father ginoske me, and I ginosko the Father. So here we have the same verb with different endings. So let's just uh, see here, the first one is the third person singular, meaning he, and it actually agrees with the subject. So this is the subject, and then we have a verb. The Father knows me, and I, and here I is our second subject for this verb, and this is the first person singular, meaning I, and so our subject is written here, and I know the Father. So the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And uh, this is our final example, graphomen these things. So this is another verb, grapho, I write, we see this ending, omen, and by this time we have seen this ending already several times. This is the first uh, person plural, meaning we. So we translate graphomen as we write, or we are writing these things. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you to learn, please consider enrolling into my video course of the Biblical Greek Grammar, where I teach in a beginner-friendly way all the aspects of the Koine Greek grammar, so you also could read and translate the original text of the Bible. Now remember, we are not just learning Greek grammar, we are getting closer to God. So if you enjoyed this video, like it, comment below, share it with your friends. I wish you all the best, learn Greek, love God, I'll see you in the next video.